All right, we're gonna talk about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So if you remember back to multiplying fractions, uh, what you're going to do is you're gonna multiply across, straight across. Uh, the one thing that I would make sure that you understand is, is you can multiply straight across and then simplify, or you can simplify and then multiply across. I will traditionally simplify first because it's easier for me uh, just so that way I can see it. We still have to have our domain restrictions here. And when you divide, remember you're gonna, the, what you're dividing by, you're gonna multiply by its reciprocal. So our first one here is, here I have six over a squared times negative two over a cubed. So there's nothing that can be factored. I can't simplify it at all. So I'm gonna multiply straight across. 6 times negative 2 gives me negative 12. And then I have a squared times a cubed, which is going to give me a to the fifth. Remember when I'm multiplying with powers, if I have, I'm going to add those powers. So this gives me negative 12 over a to the fifth. I need to have a domain restriction here. a cannot equal. Well, what value to the fifth power gives me 0? And that is 0. So here's my, my next one. I'm going to multiply this out. Uh, we're looking here. We're looking as, is there anything in common? Can I reduce it down? No, nothing's in common. So I'm going to multiply this through. So I'm going to set up x minus 7, parentheses, x minus 5, parentheses over x times x plus 3. Now we want to, right now we want to talk about our domain restrictions. Since we didn't have to do it, we could have talked about it right here. It doesn't really matter as long as you get them in there. So what value of x is going to make this 0? Well, what am I plugging into x to make it 0? Well, it's 0. So x can't be 0. I look here at negative th uh, x plus 3. What plus 3 gives me 0? That's negative 3. There's my domain restrictions. Now, we could multiply this out. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a factored form here like this. And just kind of, uh, when you progress further on, a lot of times we want to leave this as a factor instead of multiplying it out and getting x squared minus 12x plus 35 over x squared plus 3x. We're just going to leave it in this form. Now in example two here, I actually have an item here that can be factored. So I'm going to start by factoring this out. And so I notice on the bottom here, there's nothing I can factor out of x plus 5, so I'm going to leave it as x plus 5. And then I look at 7x minus 21. Well, 7x and 21 both have a common factor of 7, so I'm going to factor out that 7. And that's going to leave me with x minus 3. Times, I'm going to go 14x. I can't do anything with 14x, but I need to reduce this down. So I'm going to factor x squared plus 3x minus 10. Uh, the factors of 10 that subtract to give me 3. Well, that's x plus 5 and x minus 2. Okay. So right now, I'm going to talk about my domain restrictions because I've got everything factored. Okay. So I'm going to kind of look at this. Uh, I'm going to talk. So here's my domain restrictions. I have x e cannot equal 3 negative 5, and positive 2. So each one of those parentheses potentially could be a 0. Because it's multiplication, if 1 is a 0, multiplying a 0 through is going to give me a 0. So now I'm going to cancel. And if I have multiplication, I can kind of cancel throughout. So there is an implied parenthesis around that x plus 5 on the top. So if there's an x plus 5 on top, if there's an x plus 5 on the bottom, I can cancel those out. And so since these are the same, I'm going to cancel those out, leaving me with 1's here. Okay? Now, I also have this 7 here. And if you notice, 7 and 14, 14 is a multiple of 7. So I'm actually going to divide 14 by 7 and get 2, and that's a 1. And so now I can't cancel out anything else. These twos do not cancel out because this is one unit and the two is a unit by itself. So on top, I end up with 2x. On the bottom, I have 
x minus 3 times x minus 2. And I'm going to leave it in this form here. I'm going to leave it factored out. You could multiply it through. That's fine. Okay. Now, uh, when we're looking at a product and we have a, a rational number and then a, a non-rational number here, remember that this is still quote unquote rational. It's actually not a not, it's not, it's not a non-rational number. This is over one. Okay. So when you get into dividing, if I was dividing by this, I would still put that over one and then multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and factor all this. So this becomes 2m plus 5 over, well, 3m minus 6 factors. I'm going to pull out a 3 here. m minus 2, all right, times. And I'm going to just go ahead and put that over 1 just to help me uh, visualize it. And I'm going to factor m squared plus m minus 6. I'm going to factor that. And that gets factored into m plus 3, and m minus 2. Now, this is a good time to look at my domain restrictions. I look here, well, what value of m is going to make this 0? Well, minus 2, that's 2. There's not a value for m that's going to make 1 0 because it's always 1, so now those are my domain restrictions. Now I look at canceling out anything that is in common. So I have my m minus 2s, those are in common, I'm going to cancel those out. So my simplified expression is 2m plus 5 times m plus 3 all over 3. Okay. Now we're going to go to divide. And dividing, the unique thing when I divide by a rational number is I have to multiply it by its reciprocal. But that causes me to have actually more domain restrictions. So whatever I'm dividing by, I have to look at what's going to make this top zero, because remember, I'm going to flip it. So I have to have the top zero, I have to have the bottom zero, and I have to have the bottom zero of the first number. Okay. So I'm still going to look at factoring this. So x squared minus 25 factors into x plus 5, x minus 5, 4x plus 28 is going to factor into 4 times x plus 7 divided by x minus 5 is already factored. I'm going to just put a parenthesis around it so I know. Um, I'm going to factor x squared plus 9x plus 14 into x plus 7, x plus 2. And now remember, I have to know what makes this 0. Well, that's going to be negative kind of put it off to the side here. X cannot equal negative 7. Okay, well, I'm going to look here, too, because this is a denominator. So I already have the negative 7. I need the negative 2. And then remember that this is going to uh, be the reciprocal. So I actually need to know what's going to make this numerator 0, 2. And that's 5. So the next step is I'm going to flip it. I'm going to just kind of flip my divisor there, and then it becomes multiplication. So now I have x plus 7 times x plus 2 over x minus 5. Now I get to cancel out. And that's where that 5 came from on my domain restriction. So any whole units that are the same, I'm going to factor out. So the x plus 7, x plus 7, the x minus 5s, they cancel out. They become 1s. Don't really have to worry about it because when you multiply by 1, it stays the same. So this gives me x plus 5 times x plus 2 all over 4. And I'm going to leave it in that form. There's my simplified expression with my domain restrictions. Uh, just make sure if this isn't in a fraction, put it over 1 and then you can keep it in a fraction. Now the last thing we're going to talk about here is what they call a complex fraction. So it's just a fraction within a fraction. So here I have a fraction divided by a fraction. Okay, It's exactly what we did over here. It just looks bigger. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at kind of factoring this. So I'm going to kind of move it over here. So 1 over x minus 2. 
x plus 3, and then this bottom becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. So the only thing I don't have to worry about is this 1. Now I have to find the zeros of all the others because at some place they're divided. So here I have a domain restriction, so x cannot equal, well, what makes that 0? 2. And then I go to my next step. Well, what makes that 0? Negative 3. Well, and then I look here. What makes that 0? Well, negative 2. What makes that 0? Positive 2. Well, I already have that. So this is a fraction divided by a fraction. So remember when we're dividing by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. So I have 1 over x minus 2 times x plus 2, because I'm going to take this and flip it, x minus 2 over x plus 3. Now I'm going to cancel out anything that's in common, so my x minus 2s, leaving me with x plus 2 over x plus 3. And there's my domain restrictions, there's my simplified expression. So if you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can reduce that down to a single fraction. So that's multiplying and dividing rational expressions.